Hey, what's going on, dudes and dudettes? I am the Mystical Green Beanie, and look, I know that I'm late uh, by like two weeks, but what can I say? Life happened. Give me a break. Anyways, today I am talking about the latest event from DC to kick off by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, Dark Knight's Metal. So, before this first issue came out, I wasn't really anticipating the event like most other people were, mainly because Scott Snyder is kind of a mixed bag for me. I love Batman Black Mirror, I love Batman Endgame, I love Zero Year, it's my favorite Batman origin, as well as one of the few great Riddler stories ever told. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of Superman Unchained. I feel like it's not only one of the best stories to come out of the New 52, but it's one of the best Superman stories ever told, and a very underrated one at that. And I really dug The Wake, and what little of American Vampire I read I enjoyed. But then there's stories like Court of the Owls and Death of the Family, which I think are insanely overrated. I feel like Witches is kind of overrated as well. Uh, not bad, just overhyped. And I feel like his run on Batman overall gets too much hype. And I don't like how Snyder's Batman is a Batman that finds his solutions by jumping in a mech suit and punching his problems in the face. And All-Star Batman, in my opinion, is just bad. But I digress. The point is, I went into this event with tempered expectations, and when I read it, dude, 10 out of 10, would smash, my fingers on the like button, if comics had, you know, like buttons. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was great on every level. Just the way the comic opens, the narration talks about the tribe of the bat, and some of the stuff that was established in Grant Morrison's run on Batman, and how the world was fine until the bat tribe showed up. And then we cut to the Justice League fighting Mongol on the War Moon because the War World got destroyed in the first arc of Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, and it just feels like classic Justice League. They're all trapped in this arena, and they're wearing this armor that negates their powers, and then they have to fight these giant robots that were built by the Toy Master, who, after reading Greg Pak's run on Action Comics, I like to refer to you as Jimmy Olsen's cooler and more effective replacement. Uh, but anyways, Batman figures out that the robots were designed to help the Justice League, and then they all get absorbed into them, and they form this giant Voltron Justice League mech, and they beat up Mongol off-panel. Which, by the way, Snyder really seems to love superheroes using giant mech suits, and this was one of the few places that it kind of worked for me. So, later on, the Justice League head down to Gotham, and there's this giant mountain that just erected in the heart of the city, and the Justice League study it, and from there, the ball gets rolling. And we find out that there's a negative antithesis to the multiverse map that Grant Morrison created, and that these ancient gods are going to use Bruce Wayne as a conduit to spread their evil, and the Blackhawks have been studying this, and they're all led by Hawkgirl, and their organization was inspired by Hawkman, and all of the major magic islands in the DC mythology have very similar mystical readings on them, and they're all connected somehow, and then Red Tornado wakes up and freaks out, and there's this huge fight between the Blackhawks, the Justice League, and Red Tornado, and Batman rides a Velociraptor? Which in and of itself is worth the price of admission. And then we get to the end of the book where Dream shows up and tells Batman that things are about to get weird. And this was all just the first issue. And the book is just over 22 pages. It's no longer than your average comic, but Snyder utilizes so much page real estate and nothing goes to waste or feels unnecessary. Now, I won't lie, the ending did confuse me, mostly because I've never read Sandman. The only DC Vertigo stuff that I ever really got into was Hellblazer Lucifer, and I've read some of the Alan Moore Swamp thing, but not all of it. So when Dream showed up, I had to look up who that was because I never read Sandman. Also, the art was fantastic. Then again, it's Greg Capullo, so no doy. And I'm just a huge fan of his art. The best way that I can describe his style is that it feels like Bruce Timm's later DC Animated Universe style mixed with Norm Breifogel's art, so you know, it's always a treat to see. But yeah dude, uh, this was fantastic. And again, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Uh, this feels like a love letter not just to DC's history and these characters, but it also feels like a love letter to Final Crisis and all of the stuff that Grant Morrison did with Batman and the DC Universe overall. And this really clicked with me. Oh, but what about you? Did you like the first issue of Dark Knight's Metal? Do you think that I'm, like, mentally defective for not thinking that Scott Snyder is the reincarnation of Jesus Christ like the rest of the comic book community? 
let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, you should probably hit the like button. I mean, you don't have to, but I'd love you if you did. And if you're one of those crazy people who likes my content, you should probably subscribe because I do lots of videos like this. Anyways guys, I'm the Mystical Green Beanie. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios nachos, adios.